Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Migraine Strategy Call. My name is Debbie Weidel. I'm a certified migraine health coach specialist here to help you find your migraine freedom without having to continue to try to use things that just manage your pain, but actually get to the root cause of your pain so that you can start living that life you want to live, get back to doing work if you want to, enjoy your family and friends, and stop missing out on all of the things that I hear that you're all missing out on because migraines are taking that away from you. So we're coming to you today as we do every Thursday with trainings, special guests, expert interviews. And today I am thrilled to have Lisa here with me. Lisa, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Hi, Debbie. Hello. So Lisa is a graduate of the Freedom from Migraine Method, and she is in Destination Zero right now, our upper level program. She's 43 and has been on disability for chronic intractable migraines for 11 years. Lisa also um, has status migranosis, occipital, trigeminal, and atypical trigeminal neuralgia. She has broken her right clavicle twice, um, has myofascial pain syndrome, also a rare form of colitis caused only by the medication that she took, major depressive disorder, and probably a few other things that I'm sure we're going to get to as we talk today, Lisa. So again, thank you for being here and taking the time to share your journey and your story with everyone in this group. Of course. So let's start with just give us a little bit of your migraine journey. I know we could probably talk for hours about everyone's journey, but give us right. the short condensed version of your migraine journey to up until the point that you joined the Freedom from Migraine Method. Well, I, I unfortunately was not diagnosed properly with migraine until I was 28. So I've actually suffered from quote, headaches as far back as I can remember, but I was always dismissed as having, you know, sinus headaches or something like that. Um, but I'm 43 now when 15 years ago, 16 years ago now, I, I noticed, you know, I'm taking a lot of over-the-counter stuff and mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't helping. And I, I actually started with my family doctor, saw an ENT, had surgery, you know, did all the sinus surgery and stuff. And still my head hurts. And so went to the first of three neurologists and headache specialists. Um, and it kind of snowballed from there. You know, it was once I was diagnosed, I was already chronic uh, mm -hmm. and going back to episodic, as you know, is very difficult. So um yeah, it, it got pretty, pretty dark there for a while. I had a really high powered job, a demanding career, and it just got to a point where I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. You know, it was, it was just too much. And, um, a lot of things have happened. Um, I think I mentioned in my bio and my migraines were so severe, um, and unrelenting and persistent at one point that I did try to take my own life 12 years ago. And, um, that's how I ended up in the care of my current neurologist, who is also a migraine sufferer himself. So his compassion and care saved my life. But this program is what really gave me my quality of life back. And since, you know, since um, I went out on disability 11 years ago now, I have averaged, I'm guessing about $20,000 a year out of pocket on medical Wow. Um, because, you know, insurance doesn't cover the type of treatment that is actually helpful for me. Yep. So I found that years, you know, after 11 years of being on disability, I just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And, you know, more comor more comorbidities started popping up mm -hmm. and it was, it was hell. I mean, it was not any quality of life. I was existing, but I was absolutely miserable all the time. And constantly jumping between trying one thing to the next, right? I mean, it sounds oh, yeah. like tried it all, done it all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's actually a shorter list of what I haven't tried. I mean, everything from acupuncture and alternative medication to mm -hmm. um, cryotherapy, to coffee enemas, to to multiple, I mean, several rounds of physical therapy, um, naturopaths, nutritionists, different types of chiropractic care, different types of massage, dry needling. I mean, you name yeah. it. Um, I've probably done it and it, it, it all had very limited and temporary results. So, so you tried so many things. So why did you think that this might work? You know, um, what was it made you willing to go? All right. 
I'm going to try one more thing, one more thing that I'm just going to put on that list. Well, when your full-time job is being sick, unfortunately, you know, when you're on disability, you build a network of other people who are a lot like you. And Mm -hmm. Melissa Lorello is someone who I have been friends with for as long as I've been on disability. We actually met in a neurostimulator group (laughs) to get (laughs) this thing like implanted in our heads, right? On Facebook. And we've been friends ever since. And I had noticed her posts had changed. They had started going from, you know, updates about her family to, hey, here's what I'm doing. And uh-huh. I'm like, wait, you're, you have a life? Like, when did this happen? You know? And <laughs> so in talking to her, I, I just reached out and said, look, I've noticed you've mentioned on your own page, you're doing some things. And she told me about FFMM and explained how helpful it had been to her personally. And that personal testimony really spoke a lot to me, obviously, mm-hmm. because you know, while I didn't live her life, I obviously was aware of some of the quality of life she'd had prior to the program. So that connected me with you. And, you know, we had one phone conversation and I I knew that this was the right program for me because um, I've never had someone, you know, there are a lot of things you can try. There's a lot of Mm -hmm. stuff on social media, you know, I mean, I myself actually had talked to some yoga instructor who ran a migraine program and, you know, but you, Debbie, have lived my life. You've walked through my steps. You know, you you had daily migraine yourself for years upon years, mm-hmm. and now you're enjoying a full, happy life. So I'm like, well, the difference is, you know, who better to walk you through hell than the woman who has gone through it before you and is now on the other side? I remember it all too well. Yeah, I definitely so. do. So when you started, you joined, you joined the Freedom from Migraine Method Complete program. How was it different than things that you tried in the past? You know, because I think that's something I hear a lot from women who I talk to. I talk to hundreds of women a month and they're like, but I'm already doing that. I've already tried that. I've already done that. You know, I hear that all the time. You cannot tell me anything new because I've done it all. I've done it all. You know, that's what I hear. Yes, I have. I have felt that way. Like I am the expert on this condition and you can't teach me anything new. And you know what? Some of that might be true. You know, and in the sense of, you know, it's not like you're going to potentially learn a ton of amazing, never heard, never heard before things. The difference is, is that, um, sorry, I'm getting a little prodrome. That's okay. Right now. So, (laughs) um, but the difference is, I think, is that the new things that you do learn are very easy. You may not learn very much, many brand new, you know, concepts. Mm -hmm. However, like electrolyte symmetry was something that I had heard about before, Mm -hmm. but not anything I knew, like, how do I implement this into my everyday life? Mm -hmm. You know, so the things, um, you know, that aren't new are going to be things that, you know, you can implement into your everyday life, but also the way this program is designed is it brings these concepts together Mm -hmm. in what I call a scalable way. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people work with me on my diet before, but yep. that was it. You know, that was it. Or I've had somebody work with me on supplementation, mindfulness, all those things individually, but nobody actually helped me do it in a way that I could every day make mm-hmm. some progress in that area and also tie it in because all, all the concepts are important. All the modules are important. Um, Absolutely. And I think that's key to know is that everything is intertwined. So when you try to do things in isolation, it just doesn't work. You know, it's like baking a cake and having two bowls and going, okay, I'm going to put the dry stuff here and the wet stuff here and not mix them, but I'm going to put them both in the oven. It doesn't work. Right. So when we look at things like you mentioned, electrolyte symmetry, and when we look at nutrition integration, in order to know how you have to do electrolyte symmetry, we need to know where you are with nutrition integration so that we can put them together and make sure that we're doing it the right way. And then we look at even other things like your, you mentioned mindset. So we look at mindfulness and how those activities are impacting you. If you're more stressed, your electrolyte symmetry is going to look differently. If you are extremely stressed, your nutrition is going to look differently. So I love the fact that you mentioned that, yes, you know, we've all, I don't think there's one person in this group that hasn't worked on their diet for migraines, right? Right. Usually the first thing we do, because the neurologist says, no MSG, no red wine, no cheese, you know, stop all those things. So we all are great at doing the diet, but it still is not getting us where we want to be. 
Cause right. Or I've had, you know, I've had multiple physical therapists and personal trainers over the years. And like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody is an expert in their specific field, but no one's the expert at coordinating all of this information and giving it to you, presenting it to you in a way that you can actually incorporate it into your daily life. And that's where I think you specialize here is I feel like I'm 43 years old. And for the first time ever, someone is like, okay, here is how you, here is how you handle your body. This is how you keep yourself healthy for your specific bodily needs. You know, everyone else, it was like, okay, I saw a sleep specialist and well, there's no problem there. So, you know, move on to the next. Well, that's not true. So, so yeah, it's, um, you know, I think some of the concepts are things women might've heard before, but the thing, the new things I learned were absolutely life altering, mind blowing, and also very easy to incorporate. It wasn't anything that you know, it was extreme. I can't do this, you know? So yeah, we don't want to make it difficult. You guys already have enough difficult. We have pain. Sure. <laughs> we don't yeah. need to add more on top of that. So speaking of pain and you going through the program. So how do you feel now in comparison to before you started? You know, I actually, right before I got on this call, I was looking through an old notebook and I found a list of medications that I had written down before I was on FFMM. And I was actually taking five daily medications daily prescriptions all geared around everything physically wrong with me now one one wow and I'm coming off of that one Uh, my last medication was I actually um, due to drug allergies and other health issues one of the only medications they could give me was extended release opioids Mm -hmm. you know and I've been on those for a long time heck I was even on fentanyl the fentanyl patch at one point and now they're starting for the first time ever in my life, instead of getting on more medication, I'm getting on less. And the result of that is I feel better overall. So it was pretty funny because any, any specialist, I see a traditional Chinese medicine specialist. I see a neurologist um, who specializes in headache disorders. I see a pain care specialist and they're all like, what is FFMN? (laughs) Because you are literally (laughs) never asking to get off medication. You know, I, I, you know, it's, I would love to sit here and and tell people, I haven't had a migraine in months, you know? Yes, Mm -hmm. I still struggle. It's not perfect, but I have a quality of life now. I have hope now. I'm seeing my body change. And, you know, I slept through the night last night, which happens pretty regularly now. I went like almost a decade with never sleeping through the night. So in every way, my energy levels are much higher. Um, I've been out to dinner during the four, four months I was in the program, I went to dinner more times in four months than I had in the prior decade combined. Um, my use of abortives has gone down dramatically. Like I, I didn't think if you would have told me six months ago, you know, Hey, you're going to only be taking one daily medication and less of that. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you smoking? You know, like, <laughs> there's no way you must be drunk, you know, but yeah, but it's, it's happening. It is happening and it keeps happening. You know, you decided to join us in Destination Zero um, for, you know, because you wanted to continue your journey and make sure that you could keep knocking these migraines down, especially due to the medication, right? Because that will be challenging to get off of. You know, when you're on any type of a controlled substance like that, it impacts your body in many ways. So slow and steady, we know we're working on that, but what a difference. What a difference between then and now. And it sounds like your emotional um, your attitude is totally different too. You know, you mentioned depression, you mentioned suicide, you know, how do you emotionally feel now? Uh, well, before this program, you know, I didn't even realize I was in this place until I had been in the program for a while, but I Mm -hmm. was pretty hopeless before coming to FFMM. I had sort of resigned myself to the fact that, you know what, this is it's called chronic illness for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. this is, uh, this is just the way it's going to be. And I'm going to have to exist in this, in this body until then. And, um, I think if I would have kept on that trajectory, I would possibly even be suicidal again now at this point. Um, but with FFMM, I, I don't, I don't, I no longer look at my future with intrepidation Mm -hmm. or fear it's hope 
So, you know, this is no matter what you've tried, no matter what is wrong with you, you know, no matter what type of migraine you may have, this program can help. I'm glad you mentioned that because that is another thing we hear quite often. You know, I have X condition with the migraine. I have, you know, the neuralgias we hear a lot. So, you know, I have neck pain. We can't get that fixed, but we kind of listed all of those off for you. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm a hot mess, medically speaking. <laughs> I mean, you know, even right now I'm dealing with some other health issues that aren't, aren't migraine related and a mystery, but this program is helping with that too. So um, yeah, I, it's really, no, trust me, nobody is more surprised at my progress than I am. I, I really, I didn't know what to expect, but mm-hmm. I certainly didn't have how I, I didn't dare have hopes that I'd be off of every daily medication with the exception of one. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I, I don't think I realized how much the meds were, were weakening me and sickening me in other ways too you know? Yeah. And I think that's a very important point for everyone to note who's in this group, because so many women tell me I can manage. I take my med, you know, I take the Imitrex or I take the anatriptyline or whatever they're taking and I can manage, I can manage my life. Why would I change that? You know, it's not horrible. It's okay, but it's not horrible. But as you said, every single medication we take, it comes with a risk. It comes with a side effect and it will eventually catch up with you maybe not right now, you know, and I think that's the hard thing. We take a pill and we don't see what impact it's doing on the inside, but give it five years, give it 10 years, and then you'll see that impact. You yeah. Know? I mean, this, this is just me um, speaking from my, uh, my own experience only, but I feel like the more medication I was given um, over time, especially mm-hmm. over time, the worse I felt physically. And I, I, it was in ways I couldn't even articulate. And then I go to the doctor. I mean, just, just earlier today, I'm on the phone with my gastroenterologist office and I'm talking to them about an issue and they're offering me prescriptions over the phone for symptoms. I'm like, okay, can we please figure out what the problem is here? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cause yeah, that's actually be given, first of all, they should see you, <laughs> but second of all, you right. know, it needs to be temporary, right? I just talked to someone yesterday who, um, to get on Mgality, it's going to cost her $600 a month. First of all, you know, it's not covered $600 a month. It's absolutely insane. But then they put someone who's under the age of 25 on a proton pump inhibitor, you know, for long-term. They did that to me. I'm (laughs) like, this needs to be a short-term thing. It'll tell you right on the package, do not take more than two weeks. And this goes for many medications, but doctors don't know what else to do. They don't know how to get to the root cause, which is why we are here to help you get to the root cause. And again, please, anyone watching this, do not stop taking your medication today. That is not what we're saying. Lisa did not join the program and stop medication that day. No. Because we have to, yeah, we have to do the work to get you ready, to get your body ready, to start slowly weaning off of meds with working with your doctor, you know, in conjunction with them to make sure we're doing it the way that works for you. But it can be done. It can be done. You know, and Lisa's here to share that with you. Yeah, I think I told you a story. It might be in my bio, but I told you a story about there was a someone, my friend Kristen. Um, I celebrated Easter with her and her family, which is the first time I've been able to participate in Easter celebrations in 10 years. Um, so that was awesome. But this is someone um who I haven't seen in a couple years. Um, so that was and awesome. This she, is um, I haven't seen her in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And we worked together years ago. So she knew me before, you know, I got quote sick and she opened the door to greet me. And she was like, Oh my God, Lisa, you look so good. You look like you, you know, like she was just like, Oh, like, it was like, she hadn't, you know, an old friend. She hadn't, even though I've seen her and spoken to her, yeah. you know, it was like yeah. Uh, yeah. the real version of me was greeting her for the first time. And it was really, it was, it was, that's when I knew right then and there okay, this program is absolutely doing something because I can't tell you what that meant. Yeah. And that's wonderful because we really try hard, don't we? We try hard to hide how we feel when we're in pain, but it shows all over our face, the way we act and the people that love us know, they know when we're in pain. You know, I mean, my husband actually finally stopped asking me, you know, when he came home from work every day, how are you feeling? Because it was going to be the same damn answer. I feel like shit. (laughs) my head is killing me. You know, I feel whatever, whether it was nauseous that day or dizzy or whatever. So, you know, I kind of, 
eventually stopped trying to hide it. But even if I did try to hide it, I mean, my kids finally admitted to me, even when they were young, because they were young when I had daily migraines, you know, I never talked to them about it. And they admitted that they knew, they knew all the time, you know, and there were things that they didn't ask me to do or didn't, you know, tell me or do something with me because I was in pain. And that just breaks your heart. I'm like, yeah. you know, so those are things, those are even more things I missed. Um, and they didn't tell me to make me feel bad. They were trying to be nice and say, you know, we knew when we were caring, but you know, that time wasted, you can't get it back. You just can't get it back. True. But I'm just jumped on over on my phone over here to see who's watching. So hello, Valentina and Nicole and everyone that is here. Hello, Barbara. Thanks everyone for being here today. If you guys have any questions for myself or for Lisa, please pop them in chat below. And if we don't see them, you know, right now or comments, I should say, if we don't see them before we're done here, because we're going to finish up in a few minutes, we'll make sure to watch this post and keep an eye so we get you all the answers to the questions you need. And I know Valentina is going to drop Lisa's story in comments as well. So you can see a little bit more about her journey through her migraine freedom. So Lisa, as we finish up here, um, you have an audience of almost 5,000 women. What would you like to say to these women who joined this group? Kind of thinking that they would just poke around, read other people's comments, and hopefully through reading a post, find migraine freedom. What would you like to say to those women? Stop what you're doing you're in the right place, get help here. <laughs> That's really what I'd like to say to them. Um, I mean, I, you will not regret it, no matter what it is, no matter how sick you are, no matter how many comorbidities you have, no matter how long you've had them, it does not matter. This program has something for everybody. And um I'm just so grateful to have found this group of women. It's not just the program itself. It's the support that you get. It's the guidance. And it's, you know, I, I think like my migraine, my, my neurologist, you know, the migraine doctor I see, mm -hmm. he, he, it holds a lot of credibility for me that he's also a sufferer. Mm -hmm. He gets it on a, on a, on a level that no one else can. And that's the same here. You have women who have been in your unique situation. They've been in your hell. And they know the way out. Mm -hmm. They've done it themselves. It's not just somebody who's an expert, <laughs> you know, with um, an Ivy League education telling you what to do or whatever. It's someone who's literally walked this walk, talk this talk, and you will not regret it. Yeah, I think that's important to be surrounded, first of all, by women who are going through the same thing, as you said, having that community and that support, because it is a lonely journey. It's a very lonely journey. And even though, you know, my husband was great, I'm sure your boyfriend's great. They don't get the pain. They don't understand. They want to help so bad. They really do. But they're just like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So at least when you're in that group of women who are in the trenches, you know, we kind of can support each other through this journey. So um, I know, I know I told you that um, I was a financial advisor before I went out on disability and um you know, the, the cost of this program, you know, it's, it's not cheap. Um, you certainly get what you pay for. It's not cheap, but I think I would have told you, Debbie, that this, I believe that the money that I spent on this program is the best money I have ever invested, period, bar none. Not, you know, oh, money I invested in, in a, in a mutual fund or mm -hmm. this great, you know, bond fund. No, I mean, the greatest money I've ever invested, period. I've had the greatest return on investment with, with those dollars, um, I, I did not even know how miserable I was until I wasn't anymore. Yeah. That's priceless. That something. That, yeah. that's something. It's like when you get that cold and after you're cold, you feel good. You're like, oh my God, did I, I actually feel amazing. Look at how good I can actually right. feel whenever you're right. sick. Um, well, I love that. And, and yes, this, this working with us is an investment, you know, but we do our best to make sure that there's many different ways that we can work with women um, based on what you need, right? Based on what each right. person needs. I am not going to, um, and even Lisa, I didn't, you know, tell Lisa she needed one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching that um, is quite expensive, but those women typically come to us in bed every day, can't even get out of bed and it's worth every penny to them. You know, when they're done with the program, they're actually going back to work. They're, you know, they're actually getting out of their house and doing things. So there's all different levels of ways that we can work with you. And I get that it can be, I get it can be a definite hardship for some people, um, but we do our best to make sure we can support each and every person as cheaply as possible, you know, but not cheap quality. 
because that's right. something I refuse to do. You know, we have a team of 12. Maybe somebody else would do this with a team of four, but I want a team of 12 because I want to know that each and every person I'm working with is going to get the support the minute they need it, not a week later. Well, in the way that I saw it truthfully was I'm going to spend this money eventually anyway on mm-hmm. migraines. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be on massage tools, yeah, physical yeah. therapy, medication, you know, it's, I'm, it's gone, going to be gone anyway. I might as well invest it in something that's actually going to help heal my body rather than just perpetuate the insanity that yeah. is my migraine disease. Isn't it disgusting how much money we've spent? I mean, if we like pulled this whole group, I would hate to even think, you know, with the 5,000 women, how much money we've all spent together on trying to end our pain. Yeah. 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 I can't even imagine that number because I know me, which was over 10 years ago. So think inflation, it was over $10,000 10 years ago. Exactly. You know? yeah. I mean, that's like minimum. I mean, I didn't actually sit down and do all the math, but I know physical therapy, I paid 4,000 um, because they swore they could, they could take care of my neck pain. <laughs> right. We'll fix it for you. We'll fix it for you. $4,000 later. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done here. Right. You know, chiropractor said he could fix it. And I'm not picking on those medallies. They, they are wonderful. I'm not saying they're bad. It's just, I needed this. This is what I needed. So, oh, well, Lisa, this was wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story and your experience with everyone. I know it means so much to everyone who's watching and listening. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Um, Oh, Robin's saying she's so happy for you. Thanks, Robin, for sharing that with uh, Lisa. That's right. All right, we are going to call it a day. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Let me take a quick look at what next week is. Next week, we are going to be, where are we next week? Oh, we have a special day and time next week. I'm glad I looked. So our migraine strategy call next week is going to be on Wednesday, which is June 7th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. We have Jeannie joining us. Jeannie is actually a another coach uh, from another group. For those of you who did the summit, you saw Jeannie on the summit. She talked a lot about stress and adrenals, and she is going to be joining us to talk about the subject, our favorite subject in this group, hormones. Everyone wants to talk about hormones and how hormones are impacting their migraines, and I only get migraines around my cycle, so it's got to be my hormones. So Jeannie is going to join us to chat about the things that we actually have control over and can do instead of jumping to HRT, instead of staying on the birth control pill, and instead of being told, you're just going to have migraines until menopause. I mean, how many of you watching this right now? Tell me in comments, because I know a bunch of people are going to watch in the replay, but tell me in the replay if somebody told you that, that you had to deal with migraines until menopause. I swear if I hear that one more time, I'm going to go hunt that down myself. (laughs) Because guess what? I didn't hit menopause. I'm in perimenopause right now. And I haven't had a migraine in a very long time, like in a decade. So um, that is hogwash. Let's get that bullshit pushed aside right now. <laughs> Please don't. I had, a doctor, I had a doctor tell me when I was only 30 that I was, oh, you'll just, you know, after menopause, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so for the next, like what, two and a half decades of my life, what am I yeah. supposed to do? I mean, that's ridiculous. Because then you're hoping for early menopause, which really isn't, the greatest of thing, ladies, you know, we don't really want to go into menopause early. Um, you know, not that I wouldn't get rid of a couple hot flashes here or there, that I have, but, but we're working on this. We're working on this. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. This was an amazing call. Here's to your migraine freedom, and we will see you in the group. Thanks everybody.